Hello, Jeff Zwerink here, and welcome to Give and Take. This is the segment of our show where we explore important scientific ideas to help equip you to be more confident in the truth of Christianity so that you can go share it with others. Today I'm excited because I'm joined by a friend and a, and a colleague, Dr. Gavin Ortland, and we're going to be discussing what were Augustine's views on the length of the creation days. Gavin, it's good to have you here. Thanks, good to be here. So I know you've got a, a PhD in historical theology, so I think this is a great topic to discuss. And I know you're a pastor of First Baptist Church in uh, Ojai, correct? That's right, yep, you got uh, it. So I imagine you've had to have dealt with uh, the length of creation days and that topic's come up. It's often framed, though, as though, well, science has come along and said these are older, so we need to go back and reevaluate the, the length of the creation days. Is right. this really a new thing, or has this been around for a while? Yeah, that's where Augustine has been so helpful to me, mm -hmm. because sometimes people have the idea that everyone saw the uh, interpretation of Genesis 1 and how long are these days the same way. Mm -hmm. And then in the late 18th century, early 19th century, people start discovering evidence of age right. in the earth, and they think, okay, well, now we need to change our interpretation of Genesis 1. And Augustine's helpful because he had a view of Genesis 1 um, that was very different from what is sometimes assumed as kind of the default view. Okay. And his view was incredibly influential. Um, and so I think going back to the church fathers like Augustine, he lived late 4th century, early 5th century, mm -hmm. may, perhaps maybe the most influential Christian theologian in the whole history of the church. So, so this isn't just some theologian we've picked out somewhere in the past. This is right, yeah. one of the big theologians, if you will. Yeah, if so. you're wanting to kind of go mainstream, it's hard to go wrong with Augustine. Okay. Uh, he's not some fringe figure, right, you know. No. I, and I think that's important to, to specifically articulate that. Yeah. So, so what was Augustine's view on the length of the creation days or what these creation days were? Okay, so um, he doesn't think that they're 24-hour periods of time. Okay. He thinks that these days are different from ordinary solar days. All right. Ultimately, his problem was the opposite as uh, many people today. He thought the creation week was too long, Okay. not too short. Because? He thought the whole uh, creation week needed to happen in an instant. And so he believed in instantaneous creation. Okay. And there are lots of different is reasons. That, is that something on the order or something because, you know, for God to take time is weakening his power? Or is it something There other is a than little that? bit of that. Yeah, there he is, thinks okay. it's a greater display of divine omnipotence for it to happen immediately. Okay. Um, but there's other things at play. There's a verse in the book called Sirach. Uh, that says, he who made all things at once, and he's working with that verse. Mm -hmm. There's a number of things at play. And I wouldn't want to commend everything Augustine said on this, but I find right. it interesting that um, he, you know, he because he's pretty emphatic about this point, that these aren't ordinary days and they can't be. And he had a number of reasons why he felt mm -hmm. that way. He, so basically, he sees the whole week as a kind of framework or accommodation, kind of portraying God's creation work in terms of a Hebrew work week. Okay. And there are a number of things in the text that that led him that way. It wasn't just an external pressure from philosophy or something like that. Certainly not from science, because this is before right. modern science comes along. So, so is he looking at this allegorically, or I mean, why? Where does he get this in, in interpreting the text? Okay. Well, so he he writes five different commentaries on Genesis mm -hmm. throughout his life, and then he addresses it in other books as well. So okay. he he was kind of obsessed <laughs> with Genesis. Talked a lot about it. Yeah, very interested in it. And he started off with an allegorical interpretation of Genesis, okay. and then he eventually moves to a literal interpretation of Genesis. But what's interesting is what he means by literal is basically it has historical reference. It's okay. something that happened in history. He doesn't mean literal in terms of the literary genre in which those historical events are communicated. So he doesn't mean that it has no figurative speech mm -hmm. or analogical language. So that's what he means by literal. So it's, it's more like a literary. It's like, how do we interpret this to figure out what's going on? It's not that a poem, well, I can't think of a good, a good illustration, but there, there's obviously historical content, but it's not yeah. a historical summary of the... It's not just a, a literalistic not rendering. Not just a literalistic rendering. Of, okay. Here's exactly how you could picture it happening moment by moment. There's gotcha. a level okay. of artistry in the historical narration. Okay. And there's things in the text that cause him to go that way. It wasn't just, he didn't just have this idea one day. He's wrestling with mm -hmm. things and agonizing with little details in Genesis 1, which is why I think it's helpful for us to consider. Right. Because some people act as though 
the interpretation of Genesis 1 is just a matter of obviousness. Right, right. It's just, it's so clear what it's saying. And to see Augustine agonizing, you right. know, this great theologian kind of anxious and, and filled with angst about how to interpret this passage is kind of refreshing. It kind of gives us some breathing room. No, I, I think that's important. So, so, so he did have a literal, or literal interpretation. Or that's kind of where he ended up, um, which is a little different than literalistic, if you will. So, what what was it in the text that led him to see these as not twenty four hour days? Okay, um, there were three main things. There's a couple other minor things. The three main things, if I can try to remember them all off the top of my head mm -hmm. here, um, the light before luminaries issue. Okay. So God creates light on day one, but you don't have the luminaries like the sun and stars until day four. Right. And so Augustine is wrestling with, where's this light coming from? Gotcha. Okay. And, and, and why do we call it a 24-hour uh, day mm -hmm. when that what makes it 24 hours is the amount of time for the earth to rotate around the sun. There is no sun yet. Mm -hmm. So he's thinking, is the earth just suspended there and light is kind of flashing on and off? Gotcha. Well, you know, where's that coming from? And then secondly... Um, the different usages of the term day throughout the passage, especially when you get to Genesis 2, 4 to 6. And the whole creation work week is summed up by in the day the Lord made the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. And then it references when no shrub had yet appeared. Right. And he's saying, wait a second, we already had the plants created. Why is it saying no shrub has yet appeared? And he's thinking that this, and that really bothered him. He goes on page after page in his mm -hmm. literal commentary. You know, you can just... Picture him at his desk pulling his hair out, you know. <laughs> How is there no shrub that's yet appeared? We just right. had the plants created. And then thirdly, God resting on the seventh day. He says, clearly, God doesn't get tired. Right. You know, later in Exodus, when it says God refreshed himself, right. uh, God rested and refreshed himself on the seventh day, he's saying, clearly, this is analogical language. There's mm -hmm. some kind of comparison being drawn to God's creative work and human activity. Right. And so that kind of opens the door to looking at other things in the passage in an analogical way for him. So those were th the three main reasons why he doesn't think it, this is just sort of ordinary solar days. Well, thanks, Gavin. I appreciate your comments. Mm. You know, often as Christians, and myself included, wrestle with how long are the creation days? And it's often portrayed as you're either accepting science or you're accepting the Bible. To me, it is very refreshing to hear that this great theologian, Augustine, was wrestling with this long before science even weighed in on the topic. And to see that uh, there is some ambiguity and some difficulty wrestling with this. Uh, what I find encouraging is that it gives me the opportunity to look and say, you know what, I can take scripture and creation very seriously and know that they actually work together. You know, I would encourage you to go check out GavinOrtland.com and look for Gavin's article, Did Augustine Read Genesis 1 Literally? This will give you some more insight and help you be equipped to share this kind of controversial topic in a way where you can spread the gospel.